Well, we are heading into an El Nino season, and in a new report released from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center, we are learning it could actually be sticking around in California for quite some time. And I feel like growing up in California, you hear the word El Nino, and you freak out a little bit because it's one extreme or the other. So can you explain exactly what an El Nino means yeah, to us. Absolutely, but with that, let's actually head over to the vid wall and I'm gonna actually give you a jacket too, just so we can explain right. exactly what's going on. So Amanda's gonna stand over close to the equatorial Pacific, just near Peru to kind of give perspective as what's happening here. Now on a normal season with strong trade winds, that usually pushes the warm water to the west. So sea surface temperatures mm -hmm. are actually cooler where you're standing, hence the reason why we have a jacket over there. But let's reverse spots real fast. Okay. During an El Nino season, the trade winds are actually weaker and that allows for warmer water to group off the coast of South America. And that has a big impact on the atmosphere above. If sea surface temperatures are over here are only 0.5 degrees Celsius above average for three months straight, and to add to that, atmospheric conditions and rainfall patterns continue to shift, that's when scientists will officially declare an El Nino. Mm -hmm. So this shift in the weather down there has an impact on everyone across the board, including us here in the Bay Area. That's the reason why we're currently under an El Nino watch. So what does that specifically mean, though, for the impact that we will physically see and yeah. feel? Absolutely, head over here and I'll show you what I mean on that with our globe. Now, taking a quick look at our sea surface temperature anomaly map, it's currently showing above average conditions already down just near Peru. And that sets the stage for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this map where we fall with these standard patterns for an El Nino season. We're talking about warmer conditions above us, but then a lot more wet conditions to the south. So with that in mind, this is due to jet streams being rearranged just all around the Pacific and that moves them a lot more northward. In the worst case scenario, back in 1997, we actually saw an El Nino season that brought us the second wettest year on record in the Bay Area, and that had over 47 inches of yeah. rain. A lot of people remember that. However, I mean, back in 2015, mm -hmm. there was an El Nino season, which was one of the strongest on record, yet it had little to no impact on us here, specifically in the Bay Area. So this gives us some uncertainty when it comes to the extreme effects that will be felt here locally. Okay, so we still are just, it could be hit or miss, right? It could be hit or miss, but, but what's the probability that it will actually be coming? And that's a great question mm -hmm. too. Now, right now, as we head into the next couple months, we're still pretty much in that 38%. So a low chance right now for April, May, and June. Watch what happens as we head all throughout the rest of this year though. It really starts increasing. And these letters below, it groups the months up. So now you see in June, July, August, July, August, mm -hmm. September, heading into the rest of this year, the probability really does increase and the range of probabilities at the end of the year actually started increasing so much that there's a 50 percent chance right now that this could be one of the strongest el nino seasons on record so that's something that we're going to keep an eye on here as we head into the next few seasons and we'll continue to keep you up to date mm -hmm. with all things el nino with your first alert forecast